This week on GT Insight, we are talking about something so exciting I can barely contain myself. And I'm not talking about the M4 competition pack. We're talking about oil. Yes. <laughs> Clint Nicol is the CEO of Scentlube, which has recently appointed the distributor of ExxonMobil. Now, I know that was a bit facetious Clint, in terms of, of oil, but for a lot of people, it is pretty boring. For you, it's your life. Um, tell us a little bit about um, your job and what it entails. Sure, so uh, I'm CEO of St. Loop now for just over three years. Uh, as you say, no one gets up in the morning excited to go and buy <laughs> oil, but it's our job to make sure that uh, oil is being sold and oil is being used. And to put it into perspective, anything with wheels, with no oil, cannot go anywhere. <laughs> From a bicycle, to a motorbike, to a car, to a truck, to a ship, to a plane, everything needs lubrication. And that's what we do. So we make sure our customers are sorted in terms of their needs and that we have the right oil for the right car, for the right truck, for the right mining equipment to make sure it works to the equipment builder specifications. Okay, so there is actually quite a lot of difference between different oils. For sure. So what we know, typically you've got passenger cars. So we look after all of the vehicles on the road, your light vehicles, um, up to your little minibus uh, taxis. So that will take the different type of oil. The older cars used to use monograde oils, but then moved to a multi-grade, uh, which is kind of still a very popular grade in South Africa. And now the new cars are demanding synthetic oils. Yeah. So a car like this would run on a, on a Mobile One synthetic oil, developed with the OEM, uh, to make sure that everything works in perfect uh, synchronization. And how important is it for you to put the oil in that the OEM has spec'd? So the OEMs comes to the oil companies to come and spec their cars. A lot of work gets done on the benches where they actually test the car to the limits, temperatures, low temperature, high temperature, slow speed, fast speed. And Particularly the car, in a performance car like especially this. Especially in a performance car like this where everything needs to work on, on millimeters and, and micro millimeters in, in terms of perfection. So a lot of time goes into the benches and that's where ExxonMobil differentiates itself from the rest of the world. They've been in the oil game for over 100 years. Uh, they've made the first synthetic oil uh, many years ago yes. and they've been in Formula One racing for as long as I can remember which is from the 70s and and the same oil that you get made in the US, in Asia, in Europe and in South Africa it's the same oil that you get all across the world and that's what makes the mobile product a lot different from everybody else. So the reason we're interested in you is because um, essentially was recently appointed the distributor for ExxonMobil exclusively in South Africa. Now, Mobile, obviously, as on your shirt, is a brand that South Africans are familiar with. Scent Lube, not so much. So, and uh, researching for this interview, there's, it's a bit like a soap opera. So can you just give us a little bit of background of how it all works? Because there was engine in there. Uh, how does Correct. it all work? So ExxonMobil's global model in terms of lubricant distribution is now to partner with local companies. So the engine connection uh, was 2004 to 2014. Engine looked after the mobile brand in South Africa, and if you go back to the late 80s, mobile sold the business to Engine when they disinvested in South Africa yeah. in 89. Yeah. So mobile's new model is to work through local companies. So they look at local uh, companies in the local areas that knows the local industry, that knows the local content, that has BEE credentials, which is important in our, in our business. And they then partner with these companies, and it's their global model. So Centlub has become the authorized distributor for ExxonMobil South Africa. We look after all the facets of their business in terms of passenger cars, commercial vehicles, as well as industrial mining, uh, construction and, and uh, manufacturing. And, and that's the model that works. They support us 100% in terms of brand, in terms of marketing, in terms of exposure. And then we take our local knowledge in the local market and we go and see our customers that, that wants to deal with local companies to obviously benefit and empower local businesses. Okay, now you personally, you are a mechanical engineer by trade. That's what you studied. Um, and you've been in the oil business for tw almost years. 30, 30 years. But what I want to know is, Actually, I shouldn't ask you if you're a petrol head. Are you an oil head? <laughs> I'm an oil and petrol head. So uh, if there is an oil head, then I'm probably the oil head. Um, but yeah, I mean, we all grow up with uh, loving cars and, you know, um, spending a lot of time around fast cars. So definitely in that bracket of petrol head uh, in our sense of it. And you had a head start on that because your, your dad was very much a 
well, he was more than a petrol head. Yeah, he was a racing driver, uh, Des Ali. He was, um, well, from East London, we used to operate in the Eastern Cape. And he's been racing Mini Coopers from the late 60s and raced with famous people like uh, Ian Schechter, Jody Schechter, Ivar Raj, the guys like uh, Cyril van der Merwe, <laughs> Tony Vienna, Willie Hebben. And uh, they all know him and all grew up in front of him. He was the old man in the group, but loved cars. So, um, as I said, I, I grew up through uh, Chef can um, You had the, the V8 that he used to race, the old Willie Hebben cars, 3D turbos, 325 ISs. Uh, went into turbo, uh, Fiat Uno turbos. <laughs> so anything that had fast engines in it, he would race and, and do pretty well in it. But he was national, well, call it regional championship leader in the Eastern Cape for many, many years. So with that background, what was your first car? So my first car was the Alfa Giulia Supernova, 1976 model. Wow. And it had a 1600 engine in, which was not fast enough and took it back to dad and we put in a two litre motor with <laughs> all the other fun that goes with the suspension and that was my first car that I got in uh, at 17 and a half and drove to Cape Town from East London with a learner's license. Ooh. My mum had to go with. Okay. Uh, and that's just for me to have my car with me while I studied, but served me well for many years. You drive a very understated car for a, a, the CEO of a, a fairly large company, an E300. Um, tell me about that decision. Because you're obviously a petrol head and yet you drive <laughs> a 2011 E300. So nothing wrong with my uh, old Mercedes. Um, so I had this dilemma. When I turned 40, I needed to buy me something that kind of fit to the age. So um, it was between, you know, a BMW or a Mercedes and I decided to go to the Mercedes shop and uh, drove the car and absolutely loved it. So as you say, it's uh, seven years old. It uh, starts up every morning. It runs on Mobile One. So, um, you know, really looked after. And it's just a nice car to drive wherever I want to. I get in it, I drive to Cape Town or back, I drive to East London or Durban, yeah. and it works all the time. So, um, I also want to test that motor plan can actually be extended. You don't have to buy a new car after yeah. 120,000 Ks mm -hmm. or five years. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you know in two years' time if it's still going strong. South Africans are very set in that uh, five-year new car. car. So, as I said to you, I've got a 93 E36 M3 that I'm restoring. Yeah. So if it really gets boring in the Mercedes, I get into my M3. In your previous positions where you were, you worked with something called the Rose Foundation, which is very important for the recycling of oil, which, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. So that's very important. We call it cradle to grave. You know, a, a lubricant once manufactured doesn't really decompose. So what we try and tell our customers and our, our uh, suppliers is that we have to make sure that the oil we sell to our customers gets collected. So the Rose Foundation, uh, 1994, uh, through the oil companies, actually established this whole oil collection uh, program. And it's probably one of the only uh, independent, not government-run uh, recycling initiatives that's doing very well. It's been fully sustained, paid for itself, for a period of about 24 years. And uh, all we do is that for every place that we deliver oil to, we have a used oil tank, and the oil gets collected by the dealership where you take your car for service, or the mine where they do the, the production, and they put it into what we call a used oil tank. Mm -hmm. We then send trucks out to collect the used oil, and it goes back to typically a reconditioner or a recycler, where they use the oil for either explosives, for uh, ship oils uh, like bunker fuels mm -hmm. or even as far as um, in the cement uh, factory where they use it to burn uh, in the kilns. So just our social responsibility to make sure every litre of oil sold uh, is collected and we're probably running at about 60% of all new oil gets collected uh, as used oil and, and actually okay. done done away with in the right way. Now, uh, with uh, you talk about oils fairly passionately. What, what is it that fascinates you about the oil business? So it's, uh, as I said to you, it's something that we all need and, and, and want. Um, if you are very technical and uh, you race cars, every split second counts, exactly like that. And um, the oil has actually developed, and if you think back to ExxonMobil, they've just partnered with uh, Aston Martin Racing, with the Red Bull team, mm. and that is technology to the highest level. Every split second on a Formula One car makes a difference. Mm. And with mobile, with the ESO technology on the fuel, and the mobile lubricants in the in the Formula One cars, 
they able to save a couple of seconds, uh, hundreds of a seconds per lap, just with the technology that gets put in there. Yeah. So the mobile team works with the Formula One team. They go to every race, they analyze, they do all the analysis for the for the vehicle to make sure that it's performing at its optimum uh, position, and and that's what makes oil different. You know, if you if you're just running. Um, to home and back, you're probably not going to see that, but mm. if you want split seconds or hundreds of a seconds quicker on a race car or yeah. on a, a performance car, the lubricant that you choose is very important and that's where the Mobile One uh, fully synthetic product comes in for cars yeah. and we've demonstrated that what we call through proof of performance, yeah. that we actually tested this to the limit with customers and they've seen the benefits. Well, there is also something different you do in the market, and that is um, your connection with the Porsche Club. Yes, yeah, so uh, Saint Loop uh, in Exxon Mobil is very linked uh, with the Porsche Clubs. We've covered all the Porsche Clubs acro across the country. We sponsor the event uh, with the Pirelli tyres, so wherever the Porsches go, we go. And they all run on our Mobile One uh, synthetic fuel. Again, open the hood of a Porsche, and it will show you recommended oil Mobile One. So we do that. Uh, last year we did the event in East London, and this year we're going down to Durban. Uh, we also have, uh, we're participating in the Nisner Hill Climb oh, in, really? in, in May with a GTR, uh, sponsored by, by Mobile and St. Luke. Oh wow, okay, interesting. So we, we're out of time, Clint, it's been fascinating talking to you. Just in terms of um, the future in South Africa, I mean, Exxon Mobil is, a huge global brand. St. Lube has been around in South Africa for, for many, many years. Uh, what do you intend to do with the business or what, how are you going to grow it? So we've had an exceptional first three years in the market. Uh, we've really positioned ourselves well in terms of premium products. Uh, our five-year plan is to do even better. Uh, as I said, we don't have a, a retail network, so the Mobile One concept or the Dalvec One concept is our, our, our route to market. Okay. So that's how we're going to be seen in the, in the public face in where you take your vehicles. As you know, with the motor plan uh, fights going on legally, yes. there is a place for the aftermarket, yes. and, and we, te we intend to be in that space where we actually offer something of value to our customers. So next three to five years, watch the space. Uh, Saint Luke is on a, on a growth path. Uh, we've got an excellent leadership team. We're passionate about our customers. We've just uh, acquired a blending plant in Boxburg, in Johannesburg, so the localization is becoming more and more. And our partnership with ExxonMobil to have products available in South Africa across the board at short supply chain and lead times, that's going to make a big difference in our stretch of becoming the market leaders in South Africa. Good. Well, I wish you all the best of luck. And I apologize that we've been driving an M4 competition pack at 60 k's an hour. It's uh, all within the speed limit, so well done. Thank you so much, Lindsay. It Thank was great. You.